Hi, I'm Ben. I'm a PhD student at the Auburn Bee Center, leading our capped brood monitoring program this winter. And thank you for taking the time to monitor brood in your colonies. And by letting us know what you find, you're helping us uh, predict the best times for winter mite treatments and understand what parts of the country might be most at risk if another parasitic mite, Tropolalaps, is introduced. So it's cold out today, so we want to keep this inspection as short as possible. So all we're going to do is just find the center of the cluster and pull out a couple of frames. All right, so the first step of our inspection is to give the hive some smoke. And then when we open the colony, what we want to do is locate the center of the cluster. So I'll show you what that looks like. So up here in the top box, we actually we just have a few bees up here, but not that many. So we're going to go down into the box below to see if we can find any more bees. All right, so here we go. And uh, one thing I'd recommend is using the inner cover to cover the, uh, the boxes that you're not working with to keep those bees warm. So the first thing we want to do is actually estimate the size of this cluster because the strength of the colony, the cluster size, may influence whether or not we find any capped brood. So we use a basketball as a proxy for a sort of average colony. So this, this cluster right here, you see the bees are covering about uh, four to five frames. So we would say this is, uh, this is an average strength colony. If the bees were covering like all these frames in this box, this would be a pretty strong colony. And if we found the cluster, if it kind of looked like the box up top, or the bees were you know, over fewer frames, we would say that's a weak colony. So we'd make note of that on the survey. So now that we've assessed the colony strength, we want to pull out some frames and get to the center of the cluster and look for capped brood. So I'm going to pull out an outer frame here, just on the edge of the cluster, try and give us some space to work with. And then the center of our cluster is right about here on the fourth frame or so. So I'll move these frames aside and just pull out that middle frame and let's take a look at what we find. All right, so here, this colony, we see some capped brood. There's uh, plenty of cells right along the top of this frame. And as you can see, if the bees are really covering that frame and it's hard for me to see, I can brush them aside a bit with my fingers just so I can get a better look. So if the frame we inspect looks like this, we find cat brood, we would say this colony has capped brood and we don't have to go further on our inspection. We can put this frame back. If we did not find capped brood on this frame, we would want to look for another frame or two in this cluster and just double check for brood. So that's all there is to it. Uh, we went ahead and closed up this colony but if you are able to inspect three colonies, that's ideal. But if you don't have three colonies or if you aren't able to inspect three colonies, then inspecting one or even two colonies is great too. Now, depending on what you found today in your colonies, if particularly if you uh, did not have capped brood, that means this is an excellent time to apply a treatment like oxalic acid. And oxalic acid cannot penetrate the wax cappings of brood to reach those reproducing mites. So if you found that there is no cat brood, that means your mite treatment is going to be even more effective. I want to thank you again for taking the time to monitor your bees for us. And we hope this has been useful and informative and lets you make a decision about whether to treat your bees. Thanks again. We'd also like to give a shout out to our many collaborators and supporters on this project. Thank you.